So good afternoon. Now we are starting one of the exciting session today, and that is data science. Now what we are going to include in this today's session, it is all about what data science is, why data science, what are the applications of data science, what is the career there in the data science, and also we are going to do hands-on session using the Python data science library. So what is that we are going to see in the case of Python? It is more about how you can use library like NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib for data science purpose. So let me start with the uh, today agenda. Yesterday we have seen basic Python and we did a hands-on on the Python session. It was just to tell you like, these are the, this is the language we'll be using for data science. Now, it is a time to understand data science now and understand the various applications of data science. So let me start with the first thing first here. This is our today agenda, like to understand like data science, then understand data scientists, what the uh, role of data scientists is, the career as a data scientist, means what you need to do as a career in data scientist means. So, uh, and then this, this will help you all the guys who are from the statistics or from the, you know, the, the software guys who like to do analysis purpose for, or market analysis, or like to develop something related to AI applications, or like to go for the next level as a machine learning and AI. So for all them, the data science is a basic thing. So let me now start with the, what data science is first now. So understand what data science is and where and how we use data science now, and why we are learning this data science now. So data science is an umbrella of technique. It has so many techniques are the tools which are useful for the extracting the information and insight from the data. Now, how we do that, let's say we have so much of raw data already available. You know, like now nowadays, we have a different types of data. We have a structured data, we have unstructured data, we have so much of raw data. Now from there, if we can extract some information on how we can extract that what you understand data science now. And also give the meaning to it. Like let's say you have some job raw data. Now, if you want to find out what is the meaning, what is the purpose of the data, here the data science come. One more definition of data science is, data science is an, a field, interdisciplinary field, used for the scientific method, which uh, this method uses for the processing algorithm or system. And again, at the end, it is to, what, what is the purpose? Is to extract the knowledge and insight from many structure and instructor. So this is one of the one more definition that extract the knowledge from, from the structural and unstructured data. Now, what is structural data? Structural data, which is something SQL data, what is a structural data? And what is unstructured data? You may have image as a data then. It could be anything, it could be uh, even the Twitter data, it could be a social media data. Any data which is not in a specific format is a unstructured data then. So here data science comes to the picture now. Now this term is also connected to data mining and somewhere it is used in the machine learning also, it is used in the uh, big data. So everywhere you will see data science is used now. So let me tell you like how the data science is used and where and uh, what are the expertise is required for data science. And then let us understand the role of data scientists. So, so when you say data science, we should know like there's a one person who is a highly paid person. And there's a huge demand and that person name is data scientist. Now, let us know about data scientists because if you try to understand data scientists and if you like to become data scientist, what are the skills you require for to become data scientist now? So first thing is what data scientist is, data scientist is a person who knows more statistics than a computer scientist. And also know more computer science than statistics here now. So this is the way that the data scientist, so he's a very experienced person, having so much of experience in his domain skill, is having the business skills, having the statistics skill, having the programming skill, having the mathematical skill. So having that much of skill, he's, he can become the data scientist. So if you would like to become data scientist, what all thing you need to do, let me tell you in detail now. So let me show you uh, like, you know, the skill which you require to build if you like to become data scientist now. So if you are the having the basic computer knowledge, you can enter uh, into the any field. Now, after that, having computer knowledge, having mathematical knowledge, having the analytical skills, having the data management skills, having the visualization skill, all that skill you can combine together could be a data scientist now. So now let me show you one uh, a big roadmap 
for the data science as well as for data scientists. What all areas are there in the data science now? This is a metro map for data science now. Let me you, this is a very big map. It could be studying like what are the tools are there, what are the skills are there, which uh, which are which are required for to be uh, you know in, to become data scientists or uh, even to understand like what data science include. Data science is a very vast field. You cannot say that I know data science or I am the expert of data science. No one can say because why I'm saying there are so many areas which you need to cover to become data scientists as well as you can explore more in this data science area itself. So what these data science include now? So data science uh, here I have uh, you know the the metro map for the ten tools here. So ten things uh, I'll be talking about data science here, which include the basic of mathematics, also like linear algebra and all those things. Then the statistics and then the programming skills. So let me go one by one here. The first thing is you will require to have the uh, fundamental skill, like which includes the the matrices knowledge or mathematics or basic mathematics skills. Then you should have some basic statistical skill. Then you should have programming skill. Now programming skill be skill could be the R language skill or could be a uh, Python skill. Now here, then you may go for the text mining or NLP skill here. So these are the area where you can focus to become a data science. You may have a machine learning. You may require to learn the machine learning skill also. So if you again want to dig into the okay, you want to predict some data. So if you want to uh, uh, for the prediction, you need to understand the various machine learning algorithm. Then you may require to go for the next thing is a visualization of data, which is include the which include the visualization of data using the map plot or some other. Uh, C bonds and various plots are there. So that all that visualization of data. In the case of R, also we have a various like GG plot is there. So histogram is there. So all those skills you will require. Then next thing could be big data. Now it's like a Hadoop. Having the skill of Hadoop that will help a lot. So all these are because nowadays when you say data science, we talk about big data analysis. We talk about the the finding the you know uh, prediction of data from the big data itself. So here the big data skill also help you. Next thing you require to go for the data ingestion. How you can uh, you know uh, discover the data or how you can transform the data. So all that teams comes into data ingestion. So it's another field. Then then data munging is another field. Then so like that. Uh, if you would like to know like what else are the what else the thing you need to know in data science. So these are the some things I have to say. Like you need to know the big data. You need to know data uh, data analytics. You need to know how to do data extraction, data mumbling, data wrangling, and also the tools, which are the language which are there. Like for example, into the R language, you, you may to, uh, select the tools as per your choice. Maybe the R language, you may select the Python, you may select the Java, or whichever the language, which is your preference. So, but my suggestion here in the data science will be Python, because Python is giving the library, is very uh, the language is very easy to learn. And it has a library for big data also. It has a library for uh, machine learning. It has a library for artificial intelligence and many more things now. So this was just to tell you like what data science includes and what all things you can do in the data science. So this was just complete metro map. Okay, these are the area like you need to start with a basic fundamental or you can say the mathematics or statistics here. Then you can go for the programming skill also. So uh, once you have programming skill, you can write certain programs. So we have done that part, uh, like you know, yesterday in our first uh, session, we did uh, some small programming like control flow structure, function, writing the functions, uh, data structure, data types. So that's all basic thing. And what the statistic skill, you need to understand the concept like what is the standard deviation, correlation, uh, you know. So so all that statistical skills you require to have. So here again, there's a big list of statistics. Like even the you know simple could be the mean value more values and correlation, coefficient, all those things you will require to understand in case of data science itself. Now in Python case, we have library available. For correlation, we have library available. For mean value, we have a descriptive statistics. All these things you will be able to see in the library itself. So you will not require to go in the detail of the theory part here. I'll be taking most of the theory part in a practical itself. Now what are the data science application? How we can use the data science in a real life scenario? You can use data science or specifically, let me give the example like in the banking industry. If you are in the banking industry, you like to you know, uh, find out the bad debts and the losses every year. So most of the banking industry, they are uh, facing the uh, you know, problems like uh, the bad debts and the loss everywhere. So what they can do is they can collect the data 
from the all those people who uh, to whom they are giving the debt and then with the help of data scientists they can rescue the losses now so how they can uh, do that so there is a process for that they can uh, take the data from each and every person regarding the like you know their their their, their account statements so they can learn to and divide the conquer data they can uh, ask the customer uh, uh, they can take the customer profiling data here their past expenditure and what is the data they can collect so all the data related to the customer they should collect first once they have that data that's what i'm saying like you have let's up data in the form csv or in the form of excel or what is the form of data it is that's the raw data and if you have that data available once you gather the data you can do what you can convert into the various format then that is called transformation so here data science will help you to take the data first read the data and then uh, transform data in the various format as per the requirement now in the data it is quite possible that you may have some missing value you may have some data which is not relevant so all that cleaning of data also is a part of data science itself so now here in the case of banking industry or in the uh, banking companies if you have the customer data you can find out how the customer uh, expenses are there and that's what historical data and based on that you can analyze you can analyze whether the person is a defaulter or is there any risk with that person so that all analysis is possible in the uh, you know using the data science now and if the if the banking industry use this data science case let me do it will help them to push their banking product also so it is very very important in every industry to use data science for solving the problem there are many industry who are using data science for selling the product also whether it is whether take a, take, a, take a example of amazon amazon is selling all the product based on the recommendation system like that there are other company also go for the netflix whatever the movies you are watching the netflix is because of your personal your data which are the your interest based on that you can see certain movies or all that recommended movie is all because of data science only also what is like in go for the google search google search you know you, you may um, you must have seen the search query within a fraction of second you get the you know result uh, and that with that result i you know that result is stored in the google and next time you see that 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 what is the query you wrote that is available in the google then and you get all the relevant data from the google search you can try it out any like let's say the course like the python for data science and if this python for data science is become the keyword uh, and next time if you search you will be you will find that keyword is already available for you and you will get all the relevant data now whoever is a company has used that word python for data science that all that institution uh, videos or uh, institution they have, you know the blogs will be available on the first page only so there is a ranking so here data science used to even rank your website all that you can see is because uh, you know there is so much of data and that extraction of data is done by the google search here all this company like digital advertisement company they are also using the data science here now how they are using it even they are deciding okay like if you want to sell certain product how to sell and where to show on the website let's say they would like to show on certain as a google ads so you can see like some of the banners are there on the google ads so those all are the example of digital advertisement as part of data science again again i'm like i don't want to go in detail of each and every application here in this exam in this particular um, uh, day uh, in the workshop itself but what i'll be doing is here i'll be showing like how you can do practical here so here these are the system which are available but then uh, like what all the things you are using is is a uh, major major you are using is like let's say you are going for the facebook how the recommenders are there for the uh, specific uh, the face recognition is done and based on the face you can find out the person name also you must have seen your friend you can identify by the face all these are already used uh, in your facebook so facebook is using data science whatsapp is using the data science google is using so all these company are using the data science for certain purpose so if you look at the industry every industry whether it is the healthcare industry bank industry or uh, you take the uh, your uh, digital marketing company all these company they are using data science for some purpose now so let me now i think uh, i think you are clear with the what are the applications are there for data science now so here i'll be uh, yeah there are some other application like you can identify and predict the disease in the health industry 
you can personalize healthcare recommendation you can optimize the shipping routes in the real time and yeah there are other examples like stamping out the fraud stamping out the tax fraud automating the digital ad placement so these are all example of data science itself now i'll be uh, going to the hands on session for this uh, 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 particular uh, uh, case study like you know what how you can use a uh, how, how you can solve the problem uh, you must have seen there are uh, you know the company like uh, this like a uh, microsoft they are, they created one ai based application now ai is also a part of data science if you say that for the if you want to go for the the artificial intelligence you will see the data science is a, or data is a basic for the ai now okay so now here i'm uh, uh, concluding this part of the theory here and will uh, start the hands on part so let me start the hands on part here now i hope you guys must have already installed the anaconda and as you already installed the anaconda here i'm going to start with the the library which i'll be using for data science now now as i've given you like some input like you know about data science that with the help of data science you can extract the data and that data you can then once you extract the data what you can do is you can find the meaning from it how you can do that what is data means here and all that thing and what are the what is the language so here i'll be using the language python what is the that library by which we can extract data uh, what is that library by which we can uh, you know shape the data the giving the special shape or finding the null value so here i'll be using the library like pandas library matplot library and numpy library now what is that numpy library numpy is a basic library for pandas as well as for the matplot as well as for the machine learning for all that things numpy is a basic library that's why we need to understand the we, are, we need to understand the basic thing is a numpy first so what is numpy numpy is a multi dimensional array so data is having some dimension it could be a one dimension it could be a two dimensional or you can have n dimension now now when you look at the data like a, a list list is a data right let's say list is data array is data so you may have one dimensional array you may have a multi dimensional array so numpy is what is a multi dimensional array now there is a one more thing that is a matrix matrix is a two dimensional array so it has a fix like like okay 2 by 2 means it has a two rows and uh, miss multiple miss uh, uh, it has x and y column so that's a uh, two dimensional uh, array is a matrix here whereas numpy is a multi dimensional so in the python you have the library called numpy you simply need to just import the numpy and find the version of numpy first so first thing what i did is here i just imported the numpy and find the what is the version of numpy now you will have to understand how this numpy library is how you can create an array let me know this numpy library will allows you to create a various types of array you can create one dimensional array you can create two dimensional array you can create three dimensional so all the types of array you can create in the numpy we will also understand in the numpy that how you can convert let's say your data in the form of list here how we can convert the list data into the uh, numpy array itself so first thing is like what numpy as i just said is a it is a library for is a multi dimensional array library now this library includes lot of other things let us see like you know what are the other things other things are there so here i'm just putting the import numpy as a np np is like alias i am creating the alias for the numpy now and see what np include now so np if you look at the just np question mark you will get certain help now what is say that it is an array object of arbitrary homogeneous items now when you look at the uh, list list you may you may have a heterogeneous data you may have a integer data float data string data all that together we call list here but that is not the case in the array array means you require to have a homogeneous data means same type of data that is what the numpy will be having so array so numpy is ready to array now uh, and you can perform various mathematical operation on array now so we'll understand what are the operation we can perform on the array now how do you uh, you know do the sum of the uh, data or how do you get the max value how you get, how you get how can do the mean value because 
let me look, when you look at the Excel data, when you look at the CSV data, that's a two dimensional data. Now you need to perform the some operation on the data. If you want to find the mean value, if you want to find the max value, if you want to find the standard deviation. So you, you, these are all like a various, uh, uh, we can say mathematical function, which we are performing on data norm. So for that, we need to understand the basic part. Okay, if there's a numerical data, what operation I can perform? If there's a, a, a categorical data, or you can say string data, what operation you can perform? All that thing we can see in the NumPy also. And understand the different data type also. Now, in case of least, uh, we just understand some basic data types here. Like we saw integer, float, string, and all. But in the case of NumPy, let me tell you, you have different types of data are there. You can have the integer itself. You have a varieties of integer here. You have 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bit. So various characters, 64 bit. All that comes as an integer data only. Even the same way for the float. You have 8 bit, 16 bit. So you, you need to be very careful in terms of size here. What is it? Because here we are talking about the, the operation on the big data. If you want to perform the operation on big data, here it matters the size of data also. So we look at the size of the data. We look at the shape of the data. How much is the memory uh, you know, the data is taking? In the case of Python, like when you talk about the list and tuple, we were not worried about how much is the memory allocation and all. But in the NumPy, we need to know like, OK, how much memory you're allocating here? Although, uh, you know, it is all done uh, dynamically. Uh, internally, let's say you, you, you say it's a 32 bit data. But then if you want to have optimization, if you want to save your memory in the computer, if you want to improve the performance, we need to look at, OK, if the data size is only 8 bit, why, why should I go for the 16 bit thing? If the data size is, uh, so try to save the memory and increase the speed also. Now you are going to see the uh, the library, like you know how we can um, use a uh, various method which I do NumPy now. So first thing again, like this is like a help uh, you can get it, uh, and by just putting the NP and question mark. And there is a lot of uh, methods. Let's say I want to say the uh, one more way to take the help here is, I'll just comment this section. I'll just say help of NP now. Now let us see the help. It includes so many things. Okay, it's a very big book actually. It's a very no big notebook. That's why it is going beyond the limit. Okay, let me go to the specific thing then. So uh, if I had to say an NP, let me show like if, if you want to use a various, NP is what now is a model, is alias uh, of the, uh, for the array as well as for the matrix. So let us see the NP dot. Now, if you want to go for array, what are the various methods are there? Let me close this uh, because that, uh, this is like a very big notebook. So I'm just putting NP dot array. So dot and then tab will allow you to go for the various attribute associated with the with the NumPy library itself. So here I'm uh, going to show you the attribute related to array only. So let me show the DIR first. Okay, so when you say np.array, these are the various built-in attributes available. Now look at the help here. Here I can see one of the thing like what this np.array. So instead of looking at the entire help, you can have the specific uh, help here for specific function. So what I can see what here is saying that it is something the uh, class here by which, or you can say method, now NumPy is having the function or method which allows you to pass the various uh, attribute. Now what is that you can pass is an object as an input and allows you to create array-like object. So you can, what is that object? Object is something array-like object. It could be it could be a list also and you could be a tuple also. So you can just pass it and by which you can create an array. It could be a range function also. So we are going to see like how you can create an array using the array-like object. So these are, this is just the way, uh, you know, you can see the help here and you can see various things here, like various methods are available, like what, what, what else are the way you can create an array here. So uh, there's a, there's a array way creation, like, you know, the zeros, fools and all. I, I will show you with a demonstration here now. So let me show you something very uh, basic thing here. Uh, like, you know, uh, in the case of NumPy, what are the way you can create an array? So basic example could be like, because you already know about the list now. So I will start with that part only. 
let's say you have a list now having some data i can take the data as a uh, let's say a simple data one two okay this is data and i'll show the difference between the list and array here now let's say you have a list two and having something let's say nine five seven just taking any data here now here if i just say list 3 is equal to list 1 plus list 2 what will happen let's see here it is going to concatenate it but now here i'm going to show you something that if you do if you create an array what happened in that case so here i'm do, I'll, I'll be converting the list into array now i'll just say the let's say array one is equal to np dot now as we just saw like array is a method and here you can give there are various methods like you can give array as a method there's one more method called as array also there as a result, so there, like you can convert that into the array. Both the way you can correct. And there, if you look at the parameter, you will see the parameter here now. You can see the parameter here, like what you can give as well. So he, again, again, you can see here it is showing the array type here. And you can then mention the various other attribute also, like the data types which you would like to give it, whether integer or you like to give something like a float. So all that you can give it here now as a parameter. So these are the example here. So now uh, I'm just giving here list now. You, as I just say like you can give array or you can give as array. That's your choice now. Would like to go for as array now? Okay, let us convert that np dot as array and just giving the list one as input first. Print this array. Error one. Then let us okay. Let us print this first and see the output. You can see the difference here that when you are printing the list, let me print the list one also. List one and print list two also. And see the things. So you have a print list one and list two. Now I printed the uh, array one now. What difference you can see between the list and array? List is a sequence, array is a sequence. I told you the one difference which is there, which is not visible right now because, but then let me tell you here that list is like any, you can have a heterogeneous type of data. You can have a, is a, is a sequence of any type of data. But when you say the array means you, you, you should have the homogeneous data, means similar type of data only. Now, what you have observed in the array case, there's no comma. That also you can observe here. But in the case of list, there's a comma is available. Now let us have one more array. We are going to observe each and everything here. Array two equal to np dot as array, or you can just say array. That's fine. And list two. I will want to show both the methods so that you understand that both the way you can get array. So printing the array now. So this is a second array. Now let us try to do addition. See what happened. Array three is equal to ARR one plus ARR two print ARR three now. See what happened. Great. What is that? The output is addition of each and every number here. Like you did what? Array one every element of array one is added with the every element of array two. So this is what the difference you can see between the, when you are trying to do some arithmetic operation between the array and the arithmetic operation in the case of list here. So in the list case, what you saw that data is getting concatenated. It is not adding uh, with uh, each and every element here. But in the array case, you can see that the data is, you know, getting added. So here, 
you uh, when you say one is added with a nine, two is added with a five. So this way, every element of that first array is added with the, the every um, element of the second array. So that is the way the the array operation. So you can see the difference between the the list and array in this example now. Now when you look at again, let us explore more about this. I'm just uh, putting in one more cell now. Now look at the what array is having. Array is having arr one dot shape. What is that shape is? Shape is something like tell you like the uh, you know the number of element into the array. What so you can see array one is having the shape, and if you have some dimension, you see the 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 different shape also. We will change the dimension now. So the other attribute. Look at the dimension. Let us understand dimension also. So there is an ending is to know the dimension. It's a one dimensional array. What is the type here? There is a one method called ND type. Sorry, D types. It tell you the the type of data which is there for the array now. It is the integer by default. In case of MacBook, it is going to tell you like you know the data type is of integer sixty four bit. I did not uh, you know define here the type manually. Here it is all comes through the the system itself. So by default, the D type in the case of here MacBook, it is showing you that int sixty four. Why I'm seeing MacBook here because in Windows case, whenever I practice it, it is showing you by default int thirty two bit. So that's the difference between the system also by system based on the system based on the version also you may see some differences between the output here. But yes, you can modify it. the you can change the data type at any point of time now. Now this was to give the quick idea like okay what is the difference the list and array and how you can create an array what is array so you can understand now this is we started the one dimensional array will be uh, converting to the multi dimensional so. And we'll see, understand the different types of array also here. What are operation we are going to perform is like we are going to see the size of the array. Now, if you want to know the size of the array, how you can get the size of the array? There's a attribute available for that also. So look at the attribute for that. Just let's say array dot size. So it is showing that the size of the array is having the because you can see like there are six elements, so it is showing the size of the array size. You can see the shape of the array. We are just saw it right now. This, it was for the one dimensional. So this kind of method will be used, and also the different types of the array. So D type. So it will be a 64 bit, int integer type, float type, or object type. So that all thing we are going to understand. We also understand how to slice the data. Means how to extract data from the array, and specifically from the multi dimensional, maybe from the two dimensional data. Then. So what are the way you can create an array from the scratch? One thing I have shown you that you can create an array by using the method like uh, array itself, np dot array, or as array. You can convert the list data to the you know to the array itself. But there are other way also by which you can create an array by a built-in method which are already available with the numpy. That is arrays of zeros. If you would like to create a length of uh, let's say the array of ten zeros now, fill with the zero. So like if you have the initial array. With the zeros, so you can simply use the np dot zeros for that. If you like to create the arrays of one, you can have the built-in method, and you can also like to give the the shape here. Let's say so here we are given the shape like three comma five means three rows and five column. So in this case, you can see np dot ones, where we are saying the three by five, and again in this case we are telling the type also. So d type equal to float. So it means it is going to create an array of one. And the type is float here. You can mention here whether it should be a a 64 bit or 32 bit. That also you can mention in the D type also. So with the help of D type, you can change the type, and you can get the the new array itself. So various way to create array is by built-in method like by zeros, by ones, by full here. Here there is a like you are filling the value. So here we are saying the the array of three by five means three rows and five columns. Whenever you say like a three by five, it's a shape of the array, and here we are giving the values and filling with the three point fourteen. So these are the way you can create the array here.
you can also create an array by the function called a range. This is very, very much used. Like we will be using this a range function widely. So how to do that? We have to just say np dot a range, and with the help of this np dot a range, you can have the the range. Like it's like a range function. It's a very interesting function. You simply need to give the start. You need to give the end, and then next one is a step here. So this way you can create an array by using the built-in function only. I would like to see if any question is there. Okay, what if you are not defined types? It is based on the value. Okay, let me do Python is a dynamic language. Based on the value and based on the value, it understands data types. So the question is uh, is like uh, if we do not define a type, what type it will be? So let me know the Python is so intelligent to understand data types, as we saw in the in the case of um, uh, Python as a basic uh, also, that when you provide the value, let's say numeric value, it understands a integer. Let's say you say five, so it understands an integer. Or if you say the five dot five, it will understand it's the float type. So it is based on the what value you provide. Uh, it interpret that it is a float type or whether it is an integer type, it is based on the value only. So if, if you change the value, now let me show the, this with the example so that you understand it, what I'm saying. So here, in this case, I have given uh, the input as a input as a, a, a an integer value. Let us give the, uh, let's say, uh, one of the value as a float value. See what happened now. I'm just giving for you, uh, for an example, and see what happened after that. And, uh, yeah, but the thing is now here, there are two different types now. Uh, and then we'll see the D types also afterwards. Okay, let me see the first. Uh, so now you can see the, the type is modified here, wherever it is. Uh, and then uh, let us see the result now. Automatically the array will uh, get modified and you can see now just I have put the dot for one value also because now float is having higher precedence. So now what is happening? So all that, Data which is where which was of uh, integer type has converted into float now. So it's all dynamic. Did I mention here any type here? I did not mention the type. So if I give the value of string type, let's say I, I say some apple, banana, all those things. So automatically it will tell it is of object type or string type. So mostly it show the object type. You can see it like how the type comes here. I hope I answer your question. Right, understand it is very important to understand the different types of data in the case of array. In the case of other, you know, case of a list and tuple, it was very easy. But in the case of array, there are varieties of types are there. I'll be covering uh, all those types which are available in the NumPy also. Okay, so I hope you got the answer here for that, how it understand, it's all dynamic. Uh, as th That's why the Python is used. Python is so, the language which understand automatically, so it has a, dynamic memory allocation and also it has a dynamic typing. So what is dynamic typing means? You just provide the input and by during the runtime only to understand what type it is here now. Okay, so there are other ways also to create array. I'm just telling you like what are the way? Let's say sometimes you need to create a, a, some sample data. So how you can create a sample data? So sometimes you may require to have a, the sample data from the range, let's say zero to 10 or zero to 100. And you can then uh, have a, that many number of sample. So here line space is very important function to get a sample array also. So here, I, what I did here is a very simple example. I create array of five values, even the space between zero and one. You can change the value, let's say zero to, you make it, uh, let's say one and make the hundred. You can make it hundred also. And see the difference. Now, now you got the sample of uh, hundred. Zero to one and hundred samples. So starting with a zero, dot and zero dot zero one one. So like that, it will reach to the one now. You can take the sample the way you want. Very important function to create array. This is I did for 10 now, just to make you understand how it works. So it has done what? It has automatically created array and you can then see the size. Let's say I have save, uh, save this as a uh, array, let's say uh, six or whatever the name you want to give it. And then I would like to see the shape also. What is the shape of this array?
it's having the 100 element now. Okay, I did not give any dimension here. I did not change uh, the, I, I can reshape it, but now if it is 100, I can reshape it. Uh, so array, array, array say one equal to array dot six reshape. And it will be, let's say 10 by 10. Let's see what happened. And uh, as the endim, it's a two dimension now and print this RSA one. See the interesting stuff now. This, this time I did what? I converted array into two dimension and that's what it's showing the two dimensional. So I'm printing each and every value. And also tell you the, the shape also again, the after modification array seven dot shape. And see the shape now. So what you see here, I just uh, created the sample array here, which is with the help of line space function. What happened in this case, it has created the array of 100 values with the with the equal is you know uh, space between now here in this case zero to ten, and like divide into the hundred. So till hundred, uh, this these many values are created automatically now. Then we wanted to check the shape, so it was the shape was hundred. So let me print this. This was hundred. This was the shape. Means it was showing the hundred comma. Look at the output here. It was showing hundred comma. Then what I did, I just modified the shape and say 10 by 10. So this way you can change the one dimension. So when you say, no, okay, let me show the dimension here. Print array six dot and dim. So this will tell you the dimension. I'm writing the here, print dimension of the array. Here, I'm just saying the print shape of the array. It is now 100 com because there's no, it's a one dimension. That's why it has a just 100 element. This is like a list is only uh, uh, when it is a one dimensional. But when it's a two dimensional, we just modified it here by, okay, this was like a dimension of the array. Then here print, uh, modify shape because now we need to make sure like now it is 100 means 10 by 10 right or we can have uh, something let's say uh, uh 20 by 5 or 5 by 20 so you can just divide de decide how do you want to reshape it shape array 10 by 10 and now here you you just did that and then print shape of the array. This is now two dimensional array. And you can see the shape of the array. Now print modify dimension here. I, I hope you guys getting like how I'm using the NumPy library and the various attribute also is a NumPy now. And this way I can see everything, whatever I say, like shape of the array was 100, then dimension was one dimension, then shape of the array, I just modified it. I made this 10 by 10. And then uh, uh, the values also we can see like it is now two dimensional values. And when it's a two dimension, you can just observe like, you know, output is coming in the uh, two square bracket. That, that also you can observe here. Two square brackets are there. Under one square bracket, one more square bracket is there. You can look at the various square bracket under, and that's what you can see the two dimension. When it was like a one dimensional, only one square bracket was there. Now, this was the way, and then now let's say you want to create an array of random numbers. So let me create a array, uh, let's say say one, and understand the array of now this is like a method available 
np itself is having the random uh, function available using that you can create a array now you can tell like uh, the range also and then the uh, and the shape also here so here i'm giving the the shape in this case i am not giving the range so i'm just telling okay 3 by 3 so three rows and three columns and let us see what happened and now again you can check the type here array 7 d types now let me tell you like here also i did not mention i did not mention the the type here it understand automatically just because it is a random value because of that random value what is the value which has come dynamically based on that type is decided now so i hope it is clear and then you can also see like the reshaping and all that all possible you can see the dimension array 7 dot endim so these methods will be used frequently now it is showing the two dimension right so now this is the way and there is one more way like you can how the the create the array of 3 by 3 of normally distributed random values uh, uh, with a mean zero and standard deviation so these all things are possible to create a array so in case you like to explore more array yes i will show you one more uh, document or uh, cheat sheet of the numpy itself where you understand what all the way you can create array but these are the basic thing and very important thing to create a array itself sometimes you can create array by zeros you can create arrays by ones you can create arrays by the random values you can create array by the list so it is all based on the need you will require to use a uh, various uh, methods which are associated with the numpy array itself now as i said previously like there are varieties of the type or varieties of the dimension you can create how do you identify the different dimensions of the array so here i am showing you the three di three types of uh, dimension in the array and how you can have the three dimensional array that also i am showing here now so the first one is the array which is a uh, x1 print is a one dimensional array which we already know now now let me print this as a x1 now this is a one dimensional array and in case you want to see the uh, by method you can just say x1 dot endim you can check the size also in case you want to check the size here now the x1 dot you want to see the shape or size all this can be done here now so let us see the various methods so it is x1 so x1 dot shape x1 dot uh, size uh, print x1 dot let's say size also right so same way for the okay i already mentioned here so let me put this thing here also here it will be for two this is for two to just show you differences between this various dimension array now so how does the two dimensional look how does the three dimensional look how you can create the three dimensional how you can provide the size here so here we are providing the we are creating the array using the random and random int so that is random int is another function to create the array of integer right so let us see now is a range okay the first thing you can see that numpy uh, and here we are given the the random value zero here and uh, okay here this is yeah here this is a, like the first one first one is like okay this was a different thing this is like x1 where we are given the random int and the range is given like you know the, the random int is a 10 so it will come under the 10 only whichever the value will be created it will be under the 10 or it will be so the randomly in the range of 10 all the value but how many Uh, uh you know uh, values will be there there will be six because we have mentioned here six here the so size is six so this is the first one dimensional array then uh you can see the dimension here is one dimension and there are six uh, the size also and a uh, shape you can see say six comma means you may have another thing so it is just waiting for that so it could be a if it is a more than one dimension it will be like six by something or three by three something like that Okay. The next thing is we say three by four size. So it is going to be having the shape of three by four now. 
and the size is having the 12 elements. So what is size is like a total element. Shape is to tell you like the dimension like three by four, three by three, whatever it is, right? And it shows it's a two dimensional array. You can see here now, it's a two dimensional array now. This is a two dimensional array. The third one is, third one is having the three dimension. You can observe this now. 3, 4, 5. Now, what is three dimension means? Three dimension means we have a X, Y, and Z also. So three X is here. So when you say two dimension means we have a X and Y. When you say one dimension, just a line, single line is a one dimension. So you can just imagine here a line, single line is a, maybe X, you can say that single line is a one dimension, two line, like X and Y line. So you have one vertical line, one, let's say horizontal line, that X and Y, is a two dimension and when you have a third line it's a three dimension that's a z right so that all we call three dimensional array. i hope you can now uh, imagine it like how the three dimensional array looks like it's 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 a this is the way the three dimensional so you can print also okay i did not print the array for this so let me print this so uh, first let me print this array so that you understand that how does it look like also Three dimensional array. Three dimensional array X3. And uh, similarly, we will have a two dimensional array. Okay, here I should have put the X2 and so the differences between the Two dimension and three dimension, you can see here now, X2. So now observe this one dimension already, okay, let me print that also, so already there, right? One dimension array, you can see. And then now you can see two dimension array here. So two dimensional array, uh, okay, this could have been printed with a slash in so that I understand it. Okay, let me print it with a slash and slash and will now be coming to next line. Okay, now it will be more clear to you. Now observe here. This is a one dimensional array. This is your two dimensional array now. Having the two square bracket. And when you say three dimensional array, you can look at the three square bracket. So under the one square bracket, there are two more square brackets are there. You can see the how three dimensional look like. And look at the, the data also between the one dimension data, two dimension data, means you have a, a two rows and, uh, uh, you know, uh, here it is a one, uh, means rows and column in the case of two dimension. Here there, is, there are uh, three, means like we have a shape of here three by four, but uh, means three, uh, three by four means here what? You have a, uh, three to total uh, dimension here in this case and four by five. So these are what? One, two, three, four. Four rows and five column. So what these three is indicate? So there are three array, right? But in the three array, you have what? Four rows and five column. This is what you can see here now. And the total size is in this case, 60 years. So this is the way you can create a multi-dimensional array. So the other, and here we are mentioning the built-in function itself, the size equal to whatever you want to mention here, three by four. So three, uh, means three arrays, under that we have four by five, four rows and five column. Okay, so this is the way you can get the, the dimension, shape, size and reshape also. And you can get the types, you can find the item size, and uh, yeah, there are various things to check it, uh, explore it, that how many, what is the, the size of that particular array, uh, how many bytes you are allocating for that. So all that can be seen here. Okay, so this all to tell you like in NumPy, how you can create an array. And then this become the basic for the other data structure, other uh, library that is like a pandas and matplotlib. Now let me like, uh, NumPy is a mathematical library. It is for creating the uh, arrays, that to multi-dimensional array. One, uh, we, we just saw like, you know, one-dimensional, two-dimensional, 
and three dimensional array now. And also we saw various way you can create an array. And you can create array using the least range and so many things are there. So I already shown the various example. I have shown the various method like to get the array shape, how, how to get the array size, item size, the details, you can reshape, how to reshape the array. All these things I have shown you with the example now. Okay, you can also do the transpose of the array. Like, you know, like if you want to make the rows as a column and column as rows, so all these are possible. By the various, there's a method called T by which you can transpose the array. So rows will become column and column will become rows now. So that way you can uh, change the shape also. I hope it is clear. Okay, then uh, let us understand the very important point that is array slicing. Now let me do like slicing is something, some portion, if you want to extract some data, now you have some data which is already available, which is having certain shape now. Let's say you took as an input data, having some uh, 60 data, 60 element or whatever it is now. You want to access some portion of it, how to extract some portion of the data now. For that, we need to understand the concept of slicing now. So slicing is again having the, uh, you know, like if you want to access the first, uh, first row, how to access, if you want to access the, the second row, how to access, if you want to access the, uh, so miss, you want to access the rows or column or some portion of it. So for that, uh, okay, let me show the slicing concept in our previous example itself. In the list case also I have shown you and uh, the same way for the array also. But for array, we are going to understand for the other dimension. Okay, let me show here. Okay, in, in the previous example only. See, in the case of uh, the like one dimension array, it is very simple. Uh, let's say I want to print. First, I would like to start a very simple example so that you understand it, uh, that how to extract. Now, what is slicing means? So here, let's say X1 is there. X1 is array now. And I want to access only uh, the, let's say the first two element. I just say colon two now. By default, it will start from zero index. So it is like an index now, start is in the index zero and then one. So let's see what happened now. So I'm accessing the print first two element. And see the result now. It's a very simple example I'm just starting with so that you understand like, now you can see here, the first two elements were printed now, right? But this was like very simple, like not, not like that, if you want to, let's say access the, uh, now let, let's say you want to access the uh, one by one, let's say uh, uh, alternate element. So by default is, a, uh, you know, you generally access the uh, step of one. Now let's say I want to step up two now. See what, what happened in when you put the double colon. Now it is going to have alternate data here, alternate. So now the data was like 503379, uh, uh, it is alternate. So what is the last one? It is like when you say colon colon two means it's a step up two. So it has keep one now, five, then say three, then, uh, then seven like that. So it is a step up two now. Now what about two dimensional? How do you access data? Because this was for the one dimension is very easy. What about two dimensional now? Print. Uh, for the X2 now, rows of array. Now, if you want to access the row, how to access, let's say first row you want to access now. Okay, how to access the first row? We understand, uh, okay, so now here, I'm just print it, print X2 and, okay, now it has a two things. Uh, one is the row and another is a column now. So by default, when you say array of, let's say, uh, okay, let me start with the first zero. See what happened, uh, starting with a very simple one. Okay, you can see the, okay, it is because now so much of data is there, I will require to copy paste and show it separately only. That way the things will become very easy for you to, I will not require to run the entire thing there insert set below, this much only I'll show it. Okay. Now, when I'm trying to show here 
x2 of 0, it has shown me the first row. What if I want to show the column? If I want to show the column, how to uh, see the column now? What exactly the column means here and how, how you can see the row? So let, let me show first. Okay, zero column. Uh, if I say zero colon and uh, if I say zero, okay, let me start with the one now. What happened here now? Let us see here when you are trying to access the column now. How to access the column? Zero to colon, then let's say uh, in that, okay, zero to colon or zero to, let's say all element, how many rows are there? Zero to, let's say two. And then comma, zero colon, this is range I'm giving for the rows as for the column. Taking the, okay, uh, taking the all the rows, uh, I'm not taking all the rows here. If I had to take all the rows, I have to say colon here and then comma one. Okay, now you can see. What I do here, let me show you now. I have given the input as a first one, uh, like colon is the input now. That What is that colon is like all the rows now. From there, I'm saying the first column. If you want to access the first col column, I just say the complete rows here as input, and then from there, I'm extracting the first column. What if I want to access the second column? Then you can start with a, let's say one, then say two and see the second column. Now you can see these are two, two, six. So this is the way you can access the column. So this was like to access the second column. So the first one colon is for what? To give the, all the input as a rows and the second one is for the column. Now, if you want to all the column, what will you for that? I just say uh, starting the zero and let's say three column. How many columns are there here? There are four. So let me give the four or if you don't give it, what happened? All will come now. Okay, this is the way you can decide. Starting with the zero, or you can start with the two here and see what happened. So, what happened in this case of two column four means you start with the index two, means second column, and ended with three now. Second and three. So, nine, five, six. This is the third one. So, zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two. Two is six. Three is nine. So this is what the way the column comes now, right? What if you want to access, if I want to access from the specific rows, starting with the rows, let's say uh, one, then what happened? See, the, see what happened, if starting with the rows one. So now when I'm saying that starting with the rows one, means it has skipped the rows zero now. So here you can see like, I'm starting with this, this rows, right? The first row is a zero. So there are three rows now, zero, one, two. So I'm saying starting with the one rows and from there I'm extending the second and fourth column. So it is nine, six, eight, eight. So how you can extract now, let's say, let's say you want to extract four, nine and seven, eight, how you can extract. For that you will require to have a, se a second rows, I mean starting from the second rows, and now here, instead of two, go for one here. Instead of four, go for three here. See now what happened. You are getting the 9183. I hope you are getting like how you do the subscripting. So this is what we say subscripting here. Yeah, you will record to practice this. It's not that like it's, it's so easy. You have to understand like how you can do the sub. So, here, there are, this is also called the slicing. So there are various examples which I have now for slicing itself. Like if you want alternate columns, you can just say colon, colon two here, by which you can get the alternate column also. So there are some example uh, for uh, accessing the array. 
So R A Y of zero. That's fine. This is very simple. I have shown this example. I guess you understood like how you can access the specific column and uh, specific rows here. Now there are various things uh, to understand. There are built-in methods which are available in the array. Because you want to know, like, okay, you have data now. What all the operation you can perform data? You can have the sum of the array. You can have the max value. You can find the mean value. You can find the the standard deviation. You can find the correlation. So there are built-in function available for that. You simply need to call the specific function for that. So this is the array now. Okay, let me show in this example only. We already have this example. So here itself, I'll show you. How you can do that part? I was showing you the. Um, this one, okay. Here there is a example of multi-dimensional. Now here I'm showing the two-dimensional. Take the example of two-dimension here. Okay, and now here itself I'll show you the various thing like x two. We know now the okay the x two is a array print and various methods on the x two only I'll show you now. This is the array now. And now if I want to get the x two dot uh, max value, you simply print it. X two dot max value. You get the max value. Okay, this is a built-in function, so you have to call by opening and closing here. Okay, so you get the max value. So in the in this array, the max value is nine. Now, like that, various methods are there. So let us just call that. So what is that max value? Then mean value. Then you have some value, right? You can get the mean value. So these are like the things which are there. To get the various, so this all built-in methods. You do not require to write a program for to get the max value or to get the minimum value or to get the sum value. And by name also, one can understand what does it mean here, right? And this is all like function. And like that, there are n number of function. You have a, a functions ready to. If you look at the the dir of that, you will see there are several functions available for performing the operation array. Now, if you learn to, you know, perform the operation array, you will also able to perform the similar operation uh, or the methods for the your data, which is will, will be of Excel or CSV format also. And that's why we are understanding the NumPy here. NumPy is like I just say, like when you say the data, like CSV data or Excel data or uh, SQL data, what is data? It has certain dimension. Internally, that data is considered. It's a two-dimensional data. It's like a matrix then. With that, with on that data, if you want to perform the, you want to find the what is the max value? Let's say it's a numeric value. And all these are the operation which I shown. They are all numeric operation only. So numeric case, you can find the max value, you can find the mean value, you can find the standard deviation. All these things are possible. So right now it is just like a basic concept of uh, array here and basic concept of number because that's a basic which is a input to the pandas, input to the other library which is written to machine learning also. So go step by step, and then so, so that you understand. Okay, if I have a large data, then how I can get the shape? So because right now we are taking the a sample data of a, a, you know having the one dimension, having just the size of a, you know the uh, you can say the ten element or hundred element. But then when you go for real time data, it will be having almost a GB of data. And when you have GB of data, from there you need to find out. You need to find out which uh, the rows and columns, and you need to extract some data. You need to perform some operation on data. In that case, you know definitely it helps a lot. So all these methods, whichever you feel like okay, basic, but then that's the basic which you need to perform on a a large data also. So yeah, I hope you understood like the basic part here, that how you can uh, you know call this various method here. Okay. About the type here, just wanted to give a quick idea that NumPy support varieties of the type here. It supports your integer itself. I told you previously also that eight byte, sixteen byte, thirty-two bit byte, sixty-four byte. All these are then we have an unsigned integer also. So there is a range already there. So this is these are like all the types of uh, you know the data types supported by the NumPy itself. I will be showing you one more thing about the NumPy, and that is a. Uh, one cheat sheet which I will recommend to you. 
let me uh, show you one of the cheat sheet of numpy so that we, you will come to know the okay let me uh, share the cheat sheet here so that you understand okay okay where it is gone just a second though. not able to share okay it has come now okay it was hidden now here i'm showing you uh, i hope this is visible to you and here i'm showing you the numpy cheat sheet uh, why this i'm showing you because there are several methods available there are several methods available it uh, it shows the two dimensional three dimensional various function which i was showing you here also, uh, you know, the different data types here, the arithmetic operation which you can perform, the comparison between the array, the aggregation functions, the copying function, sorting function, slicing, and many more things which are available. So it's not the, that's so simple. Let me do NumPy is a very huge library and there's so many things to do. So that's a basic library for the data science now. So I'm not explaining this, but this is something which I'll be sharing you uh, on, uh, on a, you can say, using the learner dashboard itself. So here you'll get the, the this cheat sheet as well as our presentation. Or uh, was it, uh, I don't know whether it was visible or not to you. So uh, I was just sharing it. Let me show one more times whether it was visible to you. I guess, yeah, this was a cheat sheet which I shared to you that various uh, uh, functions which are there in the NumPy. Now I'm coming back to the or NumPy library one more times. So this was just to tell you like, because it's a very big library and then there are something like a matrix also. Now like a NumPy array, you can also create a matrix. How to create a matrix now? Matrix can be created using the array also. You can create by various function again, like matrix is what? Matrix is a two dimensional array. So it has a, a fixed uh, dimension now. When in case of the array, Array, you cannot multi-dimension, but in the case of matrix, we have a fixed dimension that is a two dimension. So even you give the input data as a one dimension, it will be converted into two dimension only. So that is the way the matrix is now. When you look at the data, which is a CSV data or Excel data in the case of, uh, uh, in the whatever the data you see how, uh, real-time data, it is a mostly a two dimension data. It's a, like a matrix only. And then you can perform similar operation on the matrix also. So you can have the matrix, or you can get the matrix shape, you can transport the matrix, you can uh, have the inverse of the matrix and, and many more things. So I'm not going into detail about the matrix right now, but just tell you like, okay, you can also perform the, you can have the matrix creation by simple function. Just uh, remember the function like uh, you can np dot matrix by using the array or by using the list by whatever the input data you give it, but based on that, you can create a matrix and get the various thing, like you can get the dimension, shape, similar thing now. You can get it like, uh, let me see like, you know, whether I have given the array as input here. Uh, I have to check it because it all depends on data now. Okay, I have to check, I have to give the array one. Yeah, so this is the way, uh, now you can get the dimension and all these things are, okay, let me again, because this was like previous example. So this is the way I just, because previously we did array one and array two, I just wanted to give the input as array one and array two. And now uh, you can perform the various operation like transpose, right? Transpose of the array. What is transpose is like, this was like, you know, the one dimensional array only, array one, array two, you know, remember that. And just the rows become the column now. This is what happened in the transpose case. And uh, yeah, you can have the various other thing also. And similarly, you can get the shape and all, like you can find out the shape here. The dimension, you already saw it, like matrix two dot shape. You will know like what it is. It's saying the one by six now. So it is a bit different. You can see the difference between the array shape and the uh, the matrix here. The in the in the case of array, 
you it was showing the one dimension means one dimension but in uh, but in the case of matrix if you give the in, even input as a one dimension the, it will be converted into two dimension because matrix means by default it has a two dimensional array only so this you have to remember uh, and this is the difference between the matrix and the array okay so now this is here i'm uh, uh, concluding for the numpy and the array part here numpy and uh, array as well as the matrix here because obviously there are a lot of thing to do in the Okay, so now the time has come to learn very, very important topic, and that is pandas. Now, why I'm saying that this is the most important topic for data science? Let me tell you, if you really want to work on data science, first thing is you need to know the, the Python as we already covered the basic Python. The second thing is, you need to go for understanding the mathematics library, understand the arrays, multidimensional arrays, matrices and all. So here we have covered the library called NumPy because that's the base library for all the uh, library which is connected, like whether it is a matplot or whether it is, a, uh, whether it is you can say the sklearn, machine learning, for all that thing, the basic library is a NumPy library. Why? Because data is considered as an array or matrix only, whether it is an image data or whether it's a text data or what is the type of data is having certain shape. It has certain size. So you need to understand data is having them some, some size of uh, array or matrices. Now, when you talk about pandas, we are going to perform the two types of operation here in the pandas. And one is like one dimension data, which is for the series here in the panda series. We we'll understand what is the panda series here. The second thing is we'll understand the library of uh, data frame. Now data frame is a two dimensional array or you can say two dimensional matrices here. So the input for the data frame is a, is like, a, it could be anything. It could be like a, a reading the data from Excel. Excel is a two dimensional data, right? Whereas uh, even the data like CSV is also two dimensional data. So all the data having the rows and columns, okay? That, all, that is all uh, come into the data frame now. So we'll understand the two part here. The one thing is the data, one thing is the series here. The second thing is, uh, uh, second thing is the uh, data frame itself. And we will see how to install. Okay, let me do here, as we already installed the Anaconda, the you will see Panda is available in the Anaconda itself. In case you are using a uh, basic Python, then you will require to install it manually. There you require to install the by command like pip command, or by whichever the tool you are using now, or, uh, or by using the uh, easy underscore install. By all that way, you can install the pandas. But if you install the Anaconda, you will find this library is already installed into it. And then what is the next thing you have to do is you simply need to import it. You just say import pandas, and then you can see the version. So I just uh, install the pandas, and it is already there in the Anaconda now. And then you can see the version. I hope this is visible to you. Let me see if anybody has a question here. Okay, so that is something. Okay, so now here in the case of pandas, let me do, we do not require to worry about the data data structures or what data as an input here, whether it is a SQL data or whether it is a no SQL data, it doesn't matter here. Here you are going to see the, the data is of unstructured type. You may have a structured data, you may have unstructured data. Pandas allows you to perform the operation on both the type here. Right. So there was one query like whether I'll be taking the uh, SQL or not. So right now, I, uh, right now the operation we are not going to take the SQL workshop immediately, but in future definitely we can plan it out. Okay. So here this particular uh, workshop is on data science, and here I'm taking more about data science, and here we'll tell you like uh, you now the library which is useful for the uh, the data science itself. So now this is the most important library. I will suggest to all those guys who are into research or who like to data analysis or whatever you want to go for this library pandas now. And then start using this library and how it, how you can use it, let me do that now. First thing is you import it. Then you can look at the this, uh, let me show that what this pandas, let me create one alias here. Print period dot, okay, uh, first uh, 
import uh, you can import as a okay let me add one more cell so that i can show some more operation here import pandas as pd this is just for a shortcut i'm reading this is not mandatory uh, this pandas you have two things i'll show one by one here one is series so series one i'll just see here series one pd dot series so uh, let us understand what the series here putting the question mark so you can see series include the input data and again data could be of one dimensional here because when you talk about series it is having the data as a one dimensional array now it could be one dimensional array data or including the time series also and you can see the data is like a array like object in this case but it has something else also and that is like it has a by default index in case you want to give the manually that's fine otherwise by default it will show the the index starting from the zero then also it include the various data types here so you can create a series of varieties of the type here see the difference between the uh, array and one one dimensional array and one dimensional series is in the case of a uh, one dimensional array you won't see the index you won't see the visible index here in the one dimensional array but in the case of series you will be able to see the index and you may have the label index also it is not mandatory to have the the index name starting from zero to whatever it is like it's not necessary to be numeric index here so it will be visible index so it's like a dictionary here you know so you can access the data as a series and then you can access whichever the data you want to access and you can update it's like a dictionary then and you can perform various operation on the series then so like the time series you have then so it's a very big uh, library again uh, if you want to see like what this uh, series include i'll just tell you the various attribute associated with the series so that uh, you understand more about the series also and then i'll show the operation so what this uh, pd dot series include uh, so it includes the various uh, attribute associated with the uh, panda series itself so it has a uh, several things to do so some of the things i'll show you they are the built in attribute so many attributes you can see just see like the such a big library it has a uh, the functions like absolute value add value you can add the data into the series you can get the aggregate or find the all well so many append like how you can append data into the the array the same way uh, sorry, uh, in the case of uh, the list same way you can uh, uh, do the append here also in the series you can apply some function like how the apply function is there so so look at the various attribute which are there in the series itself and some of the attribute like what you saw in the case of a, a numpy the similar thing like d types it is available here you have duplicated uh, you can see the uh, attribute like uh, the first value if you want to get the first value or fill any the big library you can see and you can have the graph of the like you know there is a histogram you can create a histogram of the series directly so such a big library having the mean value you can get the mean value get the max value you can get median value all these are possible in the series. so that's a big library than the array let me tell you this is uh, uh, you know you can say here numpy uh, whatever the array is there is a basic library for that it is like and now the the series is having many more functionality than the array also so we are going to see this practically again so how do you create a series you can create a series by passing any value as we saw like the way you create a array here we can create a series now so i have given just value here like 0 0.25 0 0.5 and all this thing and by because we have given the value here uh, starting from 0.25 so you can see it's a float type by default now here i did not mention the type but although i can if you want to have the some different type you can you and you want to tell also manually and then you want to give the different say a uh, different uh, size also so that is also possible by uh, mentioning like a d type equal to whatever you want to give it then now here this is a simple series we created as a data and you can see it has automatically it has printed index also so this is something interesting here in the case of array generally you don't see that in the array you don't see the the index but here you can see the index also this is like uh, these are the this is the index and you can now try to see what this uh, this series includes the series include the values 
you can access the data like by data of let's say zero and the first value you'll get it now you can just print the value so it has an index you can decide which one you want to access you want to access uh, zero to two the first two value right so this is the way you can access the data from by index now but also we are i just say like the minimal thing to understand so step by step we are understanding now you can simply call the values function and get the value so there is a like a key and value so here values are whatever you have you have the keys as the index now so index also you can print it so this is like to print the index now print index index is default right now we are already given it now print the data of one I already shown you one example print this uh you know data of one two three see what happened so first one thing is the index so it is going to print the index first and you can see the index is having the range automatically so build all automatic so it is starting from zero and is stopping four here be based on the value you are giving it has it understand that they just start and they just stop and also now what we did here the first value is a 0.5 here uh this this is zero and this one so this is the the second value here right so first one is 0.25 and this is a uh, one so this is why is a data of one now and then the range one two three so it is one three one two means that much so that's why two value came now now in case in case you would like to label with a new index now previously we, are, we were having the default index in case you want to label it with a new index how to label it just give the index equal to what is the new label you would like to give it now the index new label means i'm talking about the index now so let us do that part and see what happen print this series of so you have some data now and there we are giving the uh, index which is now the the new label now let us see what happen now you can see we got the the key and value now so let us see now what index here and the keys also print again now this time if you are accessing it will be like a data of now index will be a not one or uh, not zero now this time that that's the difference now so you will see the 0.25 now so now it is like when you say uh, like how you go for dictionary now dictionary you have say key the same way here now so you say see now with the label with a name you are accessing the value now so this way the series is working like a dictionary now so there, there there's a difference on you know dictionary dictionary is like you have a, a key value so let us see the data dot keys do you have the keys here uh, function so let us see that do you have the values here yes it is there so i just printed this data dot keys now now keys are of the type you can see the type object here so whenever you are not now you can give the name also let's say here in case you are like you know abc not necessary you should be abc you can give anything you can give the name like let's say a for uh, apple you b for banana or something like that anything you can give it whatever the name you want to give it and see the uh, obviously accordingly you will require to change now here if you want to get the apple here just see now what happen now you can get the the name here previous case we were not having the choice uh, in the case of array that uh, to give the new name to the index but in the case of the series you can give the new name also and you can update the values also now how you can update the values now if you want to change the value let's say these are the pricing uh, maybe in the dollar let us take the these are the pricing and you want to modify so data of data of let's say apple is uh, let us print this now data of apple already printed uh, now i would like to modify it and say like it is now uh, maybe uh, something like 25 is soft uh, or maybe 30 see what happened now and print data what happened now you got modified uh, see here the the update you can see the update now i just make it 30 and the apple value got modified here 
this is all like update so the the way you update dictionary the same way you can update the series here so those uh, yesterday i have took a session of dictionary and all you know like dictionary is like a the is a collection of key and value pair the same way the series here is a collection of key and value pair in this case so here you can see like you can access the data by keys you can access again you can see the the index now data dot index what is that it is showing me the index all the index now right these are the index now apple banana these are the index now yeah i think i already printed even the keys also i printed right so i hope you understand the one dimensional uh, uh, keys here and again these are the example to try it out by giving the numeric and say if you give the difference now here the index uh, uh, is different now i just said 2 5 3 7 and all and in case here if you want to check the type it has come as a float type now because the real type is a float type here and uh, okay let me print one by one now again print of data then uh, print of data okay uh, data of some index i can print it let's say 2 or data of index now here 2 what will be the value now the value is 0.25 So data of index uh, uh, five. So the other new uh, index now, not like a default index now. So you are overriding here, right? You are just passing the new value for the index. Now let us create a, a series using using the dictionary. Now in the case of array, you can just provide the data as a list only, like array like object. But that is not a case in the case of series. in the series you can also pass a dictionary because as i said previously also that uh, series is like a dictionary so here you can pass a dictionary and create a series using the dictionary also so here i am passing some uh, key and value let's say california and the let's say this is the population of the california here and this is the population data for the texas and it could be anything this is just like a, a, a various countries uh, or cities uh, a population and then uh, then you are just trying to you know see like the the series how you can create a series so key and value you can create any any dictionary like that so here this is the one dictionary you understand the dictionary now the various method which are there in the dictionary so population dictionary now in this case i am having the population dictionary and it has a uh, keys there are python method only which are i'll be showing you first population keys how to get it simply method of population dictionary dot keys how to get the values so dictionary is nothing but the collection of keys and values so get the values also so that you understand now i'm purposefully showing dictionary so that you understand it is like a dictionary only it is not that uh, so difficult to understand now if you know the dictionary in the python you will understand the the you are you can understand easily the series or the data structure because these are all data structure right so series also data structure again is a high level data structure so so various method whichever are there applicable to the uh dictionary the similar methods are available in the series also and obviously there are many more methods that not restricted to only the specific related to dictionary only there are many more methods available now so this is related to dictionary now and now here i am creating a series using the dictionary so printing the population here now which is a nothing but the here i am printing the series population dictionary series or uh, you can say uh, series using using a, a population dictionary you can have any dictionary here it's just you know, just a data key and value pair i'm starting the one dictionary right now and then later on we'll see the multiple dictionary also print it 
So here you can see the the what I did is I just have a given the input as a dictionary, created dictionary, and having the keys and value pairs. So we have the keys here like California, Texas, New York, Florida, and then there's a population as a values here. And now we create given that as an input to the series and created the series here and just printed the the series here. Now you can see. Now because we did not give the float value, obviously because population will be in the numeric only. That's why the values has come as an integer here now. Okay, now how do you access the data for the California? You see, it's very simple. You can access data by California just by calling the the keys here, by call, by calling the keys here. How do you access some of the data from uh, you know uh, uh, the range from the the California to the uh, the another uh, uh, you can say index here because this is considered index. So you can give the range also here. Like in the way you give the index for the in the case of numeric index, you can also give the here index like uh, as a categorical index also. So these are the category here. Let me show that the index print population dot index. And it will tell you like what it is. It is going to tell you that it is of object. All the index are of the type object here. They are not integer here. Okay, so this is the way you can create a series. There are several examples to create a series itself. So yeah, and you can provide the values here. I hope it's clear to you like how we can create a series now. Yeah, there are several examples to create a series only. Now, next thing is very important. This was just to tell you like how you can perform the one dimensional array uh, that is a series now. But which is the most important part here in the pandas is a data frame. And for data frame, how do you create data frames? For that, you understand data frame is a two dimensional array. And having the flexible rows and indices. So you can have number of rows, you can decide like how many rows you want to have and uh, how many indices you want. So there is a, and also you can modify the columns. So it gives you flexibility to modify each and everything. You can modify the rows, you can modify the columns here. So how is the data frame? Data frame is something where we have a two dimension, means you have two rows and uh, you have a rows and column here now. So let us create a, a data frame of, let's say, uh, having the uh, population as a value here. And we have one more that is area. Let's say we have one more uh, that is the area. So these are the two series now. So we have, let's say, uh, one thing is uh, area and one thing is, let's say. So uh, now here, what I'm doing, I'm giving the two dictionary here. Uh, and with the help of two dictionary, I'm creating the uh, a data frame now. So here, this is an example where population and having the value as a dictionary now, right? The another one is an area and that's having the value as an area. And then with the help of these uh, two dictionary, how you can create a data frame now. So here you can see the population, which is just like you gave on the key here and the value is coming from this now. Here, this is the value. Let me show that. Okay, otherwise I'll print here so that you understand the population is, is already defined. Otherwise it won't work. Population. And then printing the area also. And now here, uh, so let us uh, print this the as a, this is a data frame. Print state as a data frame and see what happened. It's a two dimension. You can see the shape also. Let us see the shape also now. You can see the various method now. Print state dot shape. It has a five by two means it has a five rows and two columns. Then you can look at the states is a is a data frame. Uh, you can see the dimension, ND, it's a two dimension. You can also see the print states dot. Okay, so we saw the dimension, we can see uh, D types. And let us see, it's showing me, okay, sorry. It, it has a, ND types. And I mentioned D types. 
so it is object type it's a spelling mistake so d types so look at the way like i i was performing the operation on the array similarly i am able to do it in the case of data frame also and here is a two dimensional data frame is a two dimensional data structure you can see here and now here here the, the data was very simple it was like like a two dictionary so we have a dictionary one as a population dictionary as a input the second dictionary is the area here by that also you can create a data frame but it doesn't means that you can create data frame only by this way there are various way you can create a data frame now so what are the way you can create a data frame you can read the csv file and you can read the excel file there is a very various methods which are there. tomorrow we have a case study also where we are going to solve the problem we are going to read the data which is uh, which will be in the form csv and then you are going to perform various operation so today is a, today's workshop is a, the input for the tomorrow's workshop so if you understand this basic thing like uh, you know how to read the data how to perform the various operation then for tomorrow i'll while using like let's say i use this kind of uh, attribute or the methods you will understand okay this is the way it works then okay so let us understand the each day is very important for all of you to understand so i can get the columns i can get the index now you can get the the various uh, you know by by column name you can access the the values by the column name area is the column name now uh, and then you can access even there is a, a population so you can print this how you are accessing data okay accessing data between the series and uh, data frame is a bit different so here we are accessing data by column now let's say so population and so we have a uh, two columns here so two columns here printed and you can see uh, the, the first one is a population second one uh, this is the this a type is integer here and here here this is area again the data type because what it is checking is the values here now now again like there are various operation let's say you want to create data frames uh, by pointing just the population as a columns uh, that is also possible here as only one column you can create a data frame using that also now i have done a small case study uh, i don't know whether the, the time will permit for me to take the case study it is like let's say i have a two list now as a input so can i create a data frame using the two list now so i what i did is i had a, a, a two list now employee name and the salary and then with the help of this also you can perform the so i created the first series also like i created the series like pd dot series by employee name so they are like exercise a thing which you can do it and you can perform the various operation after that what i did i also uh, you know uh, zip this data that is employee name and the salary so zip is a function which is a built in function of python by which i can combine these two different list and create a one list now i did a then after that what i did i convert into dictionary and now here i can create a series using the dictionary also and then okay this all like basic thing which i did uh, for this particular uh, employee data and the and the the salary and next thing what i did is uh, okay i have proceed further and perform the various operation like to know the n dimension the shape the max value the mean value what is the max uh, 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 you know the salary what is the the shape of the the series employee series so all this can be seen by built in function itself so this is all for the, the series here and then how do you access the data then for data frame what i did i given that input as a uh, that what are the employee series was there as input to the data frame and here i started working on i know uh, performing some more operation here you can see the 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 column like salary is added and uh, let me show you what all thing i did it okay so here this is the data frame now data frame here uh, i have given the employee series as a input and then let me show this data frame now okay i have to run run this previous uh, all the command then only it will work otherwise it won't so first thing first here i was just trying to save the time but i had to run everything now so i did a, a series okay starting from where till this i think i already executed let me check it because this sales I, I okay from here i started first this is like a okay this one then 
uh, zip it, then create a series, then index values, the getting the values here, then keys here for employee series, and the values count, they are the functions which are there, get the values for the Amit, what is the salary for Amit, what is the employee series you can see here, getting the dimensions, it's the one dimension, then giving the shape. So these are like various methods which are built in, which are related to series now. Get the mean value, get the minimum value, then the get the sum here. Okay, like that various things are there. These are all things we have seen in the case of NumPy, the similar thing for the series also. Getting the some subscripting, then creating the data frame here using the employee series. And now you can see how uh, this M, uh, data frame is created. So it's a two dimension now. So here there's a, uh, Amit is a index now, this whatever you see, this is the index like, and here this is like a, a, having the column name zero now by default. So column is starting from, so if you are not providing the column is starting from uh, zero to one by default. So because it's a single dimensional, uh, sorry, uh, only one column is there in this case. And then you can, uh, yes, you can perform the various other operation also. Getting the this is a two dimension, the red types, the shape is a two dimension. Having the salaries also as a one more columns. Uh, you can see now data frame is having the. Now, if you want to get the max value of this data frame, you can get the max value of salary. You can get the min value of salary. So these are all built in from shop labor now. You can describe the data structure also. Describe the data structure. Get that because that's that is what we call descriptive statistics. You can get all the things about it. So this is like to know about data. That what is the mean value? What is the standard deviation? What is the minimum value? What is the person? So all this we can see it here now. And then you can plot also. You can plot the data. Just visualize it. Plot is like you can understand like you know based on the employee name and the salary. So here I'm plotting what. The, the name of the employee versus salary here. Get the informative statistics to know about data, more about data. And then in case you want to have both the things, employee name and salary, you can create employee name and salary, means two column now in this case, get the columns, get the, uh, you know, uh, the values for the columns now. Given the name now, previously by default, if you do not give the names, uh, you know, when you do not give the name here, it gives a zero and one. If you want to give the name, you can just say dfn.columns and give the new names, and then you can see the employee name and the salary here. And now you can give the, you know, you can check the shape here to the seven by two, it has an index. Now you can see the uh, index, you can describe now. So here you get the employee salary. The you can see the number of columns here now, two columns, and uh, the type. So this is informative statistics. Now, if you want to convert this data frame into CSV, we have available called df1.2csv, and then you can create a file like empdata.csv. This is a new name, and then this way you can create a one uh, one file itself. So that is a CSV file. And this CSV file is created now. This is created now. Now you can uh, look at the path. Path is like, uh, I wanted to check it. So it is on this location. And now if I want to, let's say I have a data in the form of CSV, I can convert into data frame again. So if you want to create data frame using the CSV file. Now I'm assuming I have a CSV file now. So here I'm just reading the path of CSV file. And then again, I can convert into data frame. This is the way I can do it. So this is a reverse way now. So previously we are having a data and then we convert data into, data, uh, you know, into data frame and, uh, and then uh, we, convert, we converted that data frame into CSV or you can convert to Excel also. There are various methods. Let me tell you here, there are various methods available. Let me show that also. It's not only the CSV. If you look at the DF1 dot, uh, if I just show you like there are two itself, let me show the two itself. There are CSV, there's a dictionary, there's Excel, there's a, there are various formats, JSON, 
So many types are supported here. It's not just one type. Let us understand. It, it supports varieties of the type. So it can convert data frame into various, this is the most important part, uh, you know, if you want to convert to JSON or whether you want to convert into the pickle objects or SQL or what is the type, you can do it here now, right? So that's what the data frame here. Why, what we did here, we convert into CSV in this case. And then once we have created the file, like we are given this here, like, you know, the, the file name, which is just like you can give whatever the name you want to give it. And then you can read this file. So again, in this case, let me show something more. You can read here like pd.read underscore. So pd itself is having a various methods. So what are the various reads are there? You can read the CSV file, you can read the Excel file, you can read various files now you can see. There are a lot of examples are there, right? So it allows you to read varieties of the types of the file. And that's what the beauty of pandas here. You can have varieties of the data to read and then convert in data frame and modify the data and what are the missing value you can remove. You can remove the missing value or you can find out the missing value. You can fill the with a new values, whatever you want to do. You can do the complete analysis of data. And then you can again convert back to the what are the format you want, whether you want to convert into the you know, CSV or Excel or SQL, whatever the way you want, you can do it here. So this is what the, the beauty of Pandas data frame now. So this was all like to give you the input about the basic thing about data frame here. Uh, let me tell you, this is a very huge topic. I am trying to show maximum thing in the short duration here. Okay, so uh, if you have any question, definitely you can ask. Otherwise, for today's session, I think it's better to conclude here. And then tomorrow when we'll see the, the case study that time, I'll be covering the real-time case study where I'll tell like how you can use this Pandas data frame, then uh, matplotlibs as well as uh, the NumPy library together. I'm like there mostly it will be like pandas and then second there we'll see like how you can perform the various statistical operation there. You are going to see that in the case study only. So that all portion I'll be taking in the case study only. Uh, if any question you can uh, ask the question. If any question I'm here, otherwise I'll be concluding for the today's session. Uh, please subscribe this channel. The reason is I'm telling you like, because I said this is just the beginning of data science. I, it's not possible like to cover all the portion of uh, the data science and uh, everything in a one day time or two hours time is not possible. So, but I try to cover maximum part here. I'll be continuing with a uh, data science uh, in tomorrow's session where I'll be using the matplot also. I'll be using the data frame for solving the problem. But then tomorrow my focus will be to take the case studies that's as per our agenda. I hope you guys understand what data science and how the pandas library can be used or how, what the NumPy is. And now uh, you can use this library like NumPy uh, to create a multidimensional array and uh, also the pandas library to create a series as well as to create a data frame. And you must have seen practically like how you can create a the series using the pandas and also how you can create data frame using the pandas. And you must have understood like data frame is a, a you know, two dimensional array and uh, you can perform various operational data frame also here. Uh, uh, thank you very much guys for joining this particular workshop. I'll be again uh, coming back with a new topic which is related to data science and there'll be a lot of things will be covered like in, in our next workshop that will be like even data science, uh, there'll be other machine learning. Then I'll be going about the next topic will be the, the AI, then there'll be deep learning. So like that, many of the workshop will be conducted, but for that, I will request all of you to subscribe the channel so that you'll get the update and click on the notification also. If you click on the notification, you'll come to know which is the next workshop. Okay, thank you very much. If any question I'm here, or you can write the comment, please write the comment, ask your question. and and tell me like which particular topic you're looking for related to data science or machine learning or AI that I'll be covering the next workshop itself.